Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and we're coming back at you on Thursday, September 10th, 2020, to bring you this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. Now, it's already been a news-packed week in the world of Destiny 2. Earlier this week, of course, we had the Stasis Spotlight for the Hunter Revenant, giving us an overlook of that class. We had the release of the Traveler's Chosen Exotic Quest. We got guide videos of that up here on the channel. And we even had a patch update go into effect that we'll be talking at least a little bit about over the course of this video. So it's been a news-packed week with some really exciting stuff to discuss overall. And we're going to be getting even more exciting news with this week's issue of the TWAB. We learn a bit about how rewards are going to be changing when Beyond Light comes out, what some of your seasonal pursuits are going to be, and how some playlists are going to be going away and being revamped on November 10th. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into this week's TWAB. All right, first things first, of course, again, earlier this week, we had the final issue, at least the final issue that we know about, of the Stasis Spotlights that Bungie was doing to give us an overlook at the new subclasses for Hunters, Warlocks, and Titans when Destiny 2 Beyond Light went live. If you missed any of those, we'll have links to those videos that we did covering those uh, that, that content down in the description box below. But of course, with the new stasis-based subclasses, we're going to have a lot of new effects and names to learn when Beyond Light goes live. And so Bungie gave us this awesome macro image talking to us a bit about the abilities that are going to be coming with the frozen power of stasis. And we're going to be going over some of those new abilities here. First up, Stasis Crystals. These are stasis in its solid form, a violent and unstable block of crystal. Forms when focused stasis energy connects with matter in the environment. It can freeze nearby enemies when it takes shape, rendering them immobile. It's also highly unstable and shatters on impact, creating a stasis explosion of sharp, jagged crystals. If left unchecked, crystals will dissolve over time. Next up, we've got the Stasis Field, unfocused stasis energy that forms a sphere of influence teeming with dark elemental power, slowing enemies that enter the field. Stasis energy attaches to the being, eventually encasing them in stasis crystals, rendering them immobile. And then after that, we get some of the other effects that your abilities are going to be able to do when Beyond Light goes live. First up, being slow. We learned a bit about this with the Hunter Revenant class earlier this week. With slow, you'll be able to greatly reduce enemy movement speed, weapon handling, and accuracy and ability energy regeneration. After that, of course, freeze. Got to see a lot of uh, the abilities that freeze things over the last week or two. Freeze and immobilize foes in solid stasis crystals. The effect wears off slowly over time, but if affected players are willing to take some damage in the process, they can break out early by shattering the crystals around them. And finally, we have the Shatter ability. Obliterate those who seek to destroy you. With enough direct damage, frozen enemies and stasis crystals will shatter, creating a devastating stasis shrapnel explosion damaging those nearby. And those are going to be some of the effects that your abilities are going to be able to produce when you get access to these stasis subclasses moving forward. Again, we had great in-depth looks at the Titan Behemoth, the Warlock Shadebinder, and the Hunter Revenant last week and earlier this week. So again, if you missed any of that kind of stuff, go check out the videos down in the description box below. Stasis is looking like it's going to be a pretty interesting new time, especially when you uh, think about adding in the new abilities given to us by the Traveler's Chosen Exotic Sidearm. You can make some pretty wild ability-based builds with that gun, and I can't wait to see how it's going to interact with these new subclasses. But all right, moving on from there, the next section of the TWAB is called Suit Up, and it's going to be all about some of the rewards, whether it's vanity or weapons or all that kind of stuff, that you're going to be able to go for when Beyond Light goes live. And thankfully, they give us a little list on exactly what you can expect to be going after on November 10th. First, we're adding a new set of armor for the core playlist that includes Strikes, Gambit, and Crucible. This armor shares a new set of geometry with decals and shaders specific to the activity. Additionally, we will create new sets like this each year for Year 4, Year 5, and Year 6, and this set will arrive alongside the next expansion. Basically saying that there's going to be dedicated armor sets for all of the major playlist activities, so stuff like Strikes, Gambit, and Crucible. And there's also going to be uh, new decals and shaders that are going to be specific to those activities. The reason why they're talking about this right now is because the topic of conversation that has been huge over the past couple of months, really over the past couple of expansions, 
has been the notion that there really hasn't been too much actual new stuff in terms of weapons and armor to actually grind for within the game. Eververse always gets new armor, but a lot of the vendors have been selling the same armor set since Destiny 2 came out, so I'm very happy to see that they are going to be releasing dedicated new armor sets with each content release, at least when it comes to those major expansions. The TWAB goes on to say that this armor can be earned by completing activities or through vendor rank ups. Weekly challenges are also being updated to offer avenues for players to earn higher stat packages for these armor sets. Great. Additionally, year four will see the return of pursuit weapons. Very happy about this. For those of you who may have joined our community in the last season or two, these weapons have static perks but allow for some customization. The final two perk columns have multiple perks to choose from so you can tailor your weapon to your desired playstyle. Our eagle-eyed guardians may recognize this beauty from a recent stasis trailer. And then we get to see what is going to be uh, apparently the new pursuit weapon that's going to drop alongside Beyond Light. And it looks like an updated scarf-covered version of the beloved sniper rifle. And right there, I have to say I'm very happy that Bungie's going to be moving back to the pursuit weapon system. I, I was always a fan of that sort of thing. It's always nice to have something new that's playlist-specific to grind towards every season. Good idea. Anyways, they go on to state that their goal is to have a pursuit weapon available per season, earned through a focused quest. Banshee will give you a choice between Strikes, Crucible, or Gambit to earn the base model. Make sure you take a moment to think about how you want to earn a weapon, as you'll be locked into the specific objectives for whichever activity you pick. Once you finish the main quest, Commander Zavala, Lord Shax, and the Drifter will offer you an additional quest which will reward you with weapon ornaments to the theme of their respective activities. If you're omnivorous and enjoy all three offerings, all three will be available to you. And then we get a look at what the three weapon ornaments for Strikes, for Crucible, and for Gambit, whatever the new Gambit game mode is going to be, are going to look like on this new version of the beloved Sniper Rifle. And right now, I just have to say, Yes, this is exactly what I wanted to hear when it came to pursuit weapons. Bungie's kind of hitting us with a, w a double whammy here, as it were. They're bringing those pursuit weapons back, but they're making it so that you can play whatever playlist activity you prefer. If you're a PvE guy who hates Gambit and hates, you know, the Crucible, you can do strikes. If you're a PvP guy who hates having to run strikes and do busy work and stuff like that, you can choose to go and earn this by playing the Crucible. It's just whatever, whatever you choose, you're going to be locked into until you complete the quest. I love that. In part two of this, I love that there's going to be weapon ornaments that you actually earn by playing these game modes. Great system, Bungie. I love it. Let's move forward with this sort of thing. I'm glad to see the pursuit weapons coming back, and I'm glad that there's going to be additional rewards for them that you can earn by playing specific activities. The one complaint that I do have is that it is a reskinned Beloved rather than a brand new weapon. I would have loved it if this was like a brand new weapon. You know, we're getting new geometry and stuff with a new armor. It would have been great if this was a brand new unique weapon rather than a reskin. But either way, I think this is a step in the right direction. But that's not the only news we have when it comes to playlist activities, because of course, a lot of these playlists are going to be changing when Beyond Light goes live. For the Crucible, they're reducing the number of active playlists that are going to be available at a given time. And we get a great list of what's going to be available here. The featured modes will be Control, Elimination, Rumble, and Survival, with weekly rotators for Clash, Mayhem, and Showdown. Of course, remember, they're getting rid of stuff like uh, Supremacy. You're also going to have private matches, of course, and then the limited availability playlists. This is going to be stuff like Iron Banner and the newly announced Iron Banner Freelance, which is going to be making its debut in Season 12. Similar to Competitive, this is going to be a smaller node next to Iron Banner when the playlist is available, and is likely going to be basically a no-fire team matchmaking mode for Iron Banner. Thank you, Bungie. Really happy about that. And then, of course, we have the weekend availability modes like Trials of Osiris. They also give us a note here, Adept weapons rewarded to those reaching the lighthouse will return to Trials of Osiris in Season 12. And they'll give us more details on that in a sandbox preview that's scheduled for October. Really big stuff there. Happy that they're cutting down on some of the playlists there. Really happy about Adept Weapons coming back to Trials, and really, really happy about the Iron Banner Freelance playlist. But it's not the only thing that's seeing playlist changes. Because, of course, we're getting similar revamps for the Strikes and Gambit playlists. Here's what's changing for Strikes. Vanguard Strikes and Nightfall the Ordeal will be your two playlist options. 
Each playlist will continue to offer weekly challenges for powerful loot, and Nightfall, the ordeal, will continue to feature matchmaking at lower difficulties and increased rewards for higher difficulty options. They also give us a note here, we're also looking to add adept weapons to strikes in a future season. Again, we'll have updates closer to season 13 on what to expect. Really excited about that. I think that's a fantastic way to incentivize people to actually run strikes. As it is right now, the only time you catch DBL in strikes is when I have to run it for a quest or an exotic or something like that. Very excited to see what Bungie's going to be doing with that moving forward. And finally, we've got the changes coming to Gambit. Of course, we know that Bungie is going to be kind of merging the normal Gambit and the Gambit Prime game mode. And in this section, they talk a bit about how exactly they're going to be doing that. I'm not going to be going through all the changes here, but some of the biggest ones are that they kept invasions during moat phases at a maximum of three, just like it is in Gambit Prime. But Gambit's also going to be moving to a sort of one phase game mode rather than a best of three game mode like the normal Gambit is. Additionally, they've also pulled back the minimum time between invasions during moat phases from 10 seconds to 20 seconds so that you won't be getting invaded back to back kind of like you can in Gambit and Gambit Prime right now. For the boss fight, they've removed the timed Slayer buffs and increased the primeval health and potency of the Slayer buff given when killing Envoys. They also go on to note that generally the Envoys will spawn every 40% of damage done to the primeval. So if you happen to get invaded and like the invader gets a bunch of kills and your primeval's health goes back up, you'll have an opportunity to get more Slayer buffs to help you catch up to the enemy team. But since there's no Time Slayer buff now, you're going to be able to enjoy the benefits of those buffs longer, and it's hopefully going to help the Primeval fight phase go by a little bit faster. Ultimately, they wanted to mix Gambit and Gambit Prime, but make the game mode a little bit quicker than what it is right now, so that you're in and out of matches even faster. Additionally, they've lowered the level of some of the boss level taken that you can uh, summon on your enemies here. So you're going to have an easier time taking out some of those elite taken than you do currently in the game. Overall, some major changes coming to Gambit that'll hopefully make the game mode a little bit more tolerable than it is right now. Thankfully, we'll be learning even more about that and other stuff like the economy, Eververse, and the Sandbox later on before Beyond Light comes live. But alright, Guardians, there we go. That's pretty much it for the biggest bits of news released in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. A lot of really exciting stuff in there. Very happy to hear about a lot of the playlist changes coming to Crucible and to the, uh, the Strike playlist and all that kind of stuff. Very happy to hear about Adept Weapons making their return to Trials and even getting a, uh, a, a version of that in Strikes. Cannot wait to see how Bungie's going to pull that off. But that's the news and those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff that we're putting out. But that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.